The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to The Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly will be Dennis Sosick back from his sh- little short hiatus of uh, a couple of weeks and uh, bringing you uh, the uh, our waiver uh, review of the Fantasy Pros waivers, early waiver rankings. So uh, we'll take a look at that, plus all the latest news uh, um, since the Sunday action, a few of the injuries and people coming back and stuff, and uh, the game of Monday Night Football just started, and Seattle has a seven-point lead over the Saints. Great catch and run by uh dk metcalf to uh to start the scoring dennis great to have you back man hey richard uh thanks for having me back sorry for the hiatus and uh you had to drive a little solo the first week and thanks to davis paying for the second week yeah you did uh, great job. for me appreciate that um Enough about me. Let's let's get to football. <laughs> let's get to the football. <laughs> I agree. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at um, something. Something. Let's start off with the light stuff. Well, it's not light because Malcolm Brown is going. He's going on IR with the quad. Um, really, he's just uh, an addition to the Miami. He's just depth on Miami as at this point, Dennis. He's. he's it's really no uh, big deal him leaving, but. Um, it might be interesting about who comes up in his spot to see if uh, someone can take over that backfield. Not that Miles Gaskin, Miles Gaskin's been doing okay lately, but uh, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, and with Malcolm Brown, he's he's been a pain in the butt for fantasy owners for a long time, being a vulture of main running backs. You know, Gaskin has his ups and downs, and I think he got the volume on Sunday, but I'm not sure how much they really trust him or not. And, um, you know, Salvin Hamad's there. He should get some touches there too. I don't trust that offense and offensive line. So I think we're going to see a lot more Tua or whoever is the quarterback after the trade of the line. Um, and I'm not really too keen on that running game. Right no, and, uh, and you say in the offense in general as well, they're not really there. It's not happening there in Miami. And they're even looking towards, uh, the trade. I think they're even thinking that, uh, uh, Deshaun Watson is in the conversation, which is something that we should, should actually touch on is this Deshaun Watson thing. Uh, I, I haven't really been following the story about what's happening with a trade with him or what teams are interested. Do you know anything much about it or is it? Yeah, a lot of it's like rumors. Uh, I'm not sure even if he does get traded as he played this year with all the legal issues that he has. I mean, yeah. Miami's been in the running, Carolina Panthers, especially now with Darnold starting to fall to the wayside and getting benched on Sunday. Um, you know, I mean, Watson's a hell of a player, but he's also dealing with a lot of problems that uh, I'm not sure if he's even going to see the field this year. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, the benching of Sam Darnold, but also uh, the the injury to Zach Wilson comes to mind as well. They brought in Flacco now uh, because they right, obviously don't it. they don't trust White to uh, to do the job. So they so they made a trade with Philadelphia, putting Minshew as the backup there in in Philadelphia, and I think it's probably a proper move. Uh, uh, I think it actually it might help the the Jets, you know, get off the carpet a little bit because um, yeah, they're they're bench. actually playing awful. But I don't. Flacco doesn't add a whole lot. He's you know he's he's a capable veteran, but um, he's but he's never been an exciting quarterback to me. But uh, yeah. he's but, a statue in the in the pocket as well. He doesn't move at all. So no, the offensive line is not that good. So he may he be a long season there. Yeah. So uh, I guess the Jets will stay on the carpet. And but the thing is, is that you need a good court half decent quarterback to at least help you know the 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 downfield jets right right so anyway uh moving right along uh Devontae adams uh thursday night game in doubt um because of uh c19 and uh, uh because it's a thursday night game um he might not clear in time uh to to be quite honest it's it's more of i know fantasy owners will be disappointed but I think as football fan in general, because this game between Green Bay and Arizona is, is kind of a really premier matchup. You want to see all the best players in it to, to make it a really good game. And I think, you know, it's not just fantasy we're losing. We're, we're kind of losing a good game, aren't we? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it should have been a shootout with Adams and Rodgers uh, playing uh, pass and catch all day, all game. And, that, uh, and both offenses are, you know, are striving right now. It's a shame we're not going to see it, and hopefully Adams is okay. 
Um, you know, with now Rodgers, what does Rodgers do with the passing game? I mean, no one really stands out when Adams is even on the field, and now without him on the field, who's gonna who's gonna be the receiver that stands out? You know, Lazard, who scored the last two weeks, um, his best friend Randall Cobb, who they wanted, he wanted so bad on the team, does he step up? Or they go on the, they go to the running game with Aaron Jones. I'm not sure. I mean, it's probably uh, better to keep the ball away from Kyler Murray. I mean, as much as you want Rodgers to be in a shootout, but I don't uh, think they have the weapons to do that. It's pretty much a reliance on, on Lazard, but Lazard, I mean, Arizona's got a good defense. I can't, Lazard doesn't match up well with, I mean, Lazard does well when he's not the number one, because Lazard would do well if there was somebody to take away the attention, but Lazard being the, you know, drawing all the attention of the secondary, I don't think he's such a good option. I think probably Cobb will have the better game, if you ask me. Yeah, uh, I agree. So, Aaron Jones are probably a big game. Yeah, and, and you, yeah, as you mentioned, Aaron Jones. And, uh, so, uh, looking forward to that Thursday night game, nonetheless. Should be a good one. <clears throat> um, uh, next in the news is, uh, speaking of the Cardinals, uh, Zach Ertz first came back with the Cardinals post 60 yards and a touchdown. And the question I have with you, Dennis, is this. And, and I wonder what your, what your thoughts are on this. Is, this. is that we're always hearing about this thing about players, you know, they got to learn the playbook and stuff like this. He, he comes in there and gets 65 yards and a score. And he's had hardly any time. Is this? Is there a lot of BS about this play, learning the playbook stuff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, most offenses run basically the same thing. You know, a lot more just about verbiage of you know the plays and uh, you know what they're going to do on you know certain play calls. But majority of it's uh, all the same. I mean, what he what he did score on was a forty-seven yard touchdown, which is he was wide open and he ran for like ten yards, but he was wide open in the middle of the field. Mm. And that offense has so many weapons there. Um, he's going to, you know, they spread the ball around so much that, um, you know, Kyler and Murray has to just pick and choose who he wants to go to and be in their earths is wide open. They picked him and he scored. I mean, he's more of a touchdown and bust now, I think, in that offense for the rest of the season. Well, yeah. And then, uh, of course, there's a lot of mouths to feed in that, in, in that very big offense. You know, it's, um, just taking a look at, uh, Ertz is, uh, He's 81% owned, so there's no chance he probably get. But he is, yeah. uh, but he is a good own. And, uh, so he transferred well. He transferred into a far better situation, obviously, than he was getting in right. Philadelphia. He wanted out of there anyway. Oh, definitely. And, uh, just helps. It helps everybody in fantasy. Uh, uh, Goddard as well. Is Goddard Absolutely, as well. yeah. A I little bit. A fantasy team. And, yeah, he always had Ertz, you know, playing with him and hurt his, uh, production now with Ertz not there. You hope we got her to step up. Uh, other positive stuff. Rashad Penny uh, activated uh, from IR, as is Michael Gallup and Jerry Judy. So they'll be all back. And actually, Rashad Penny is actually active for this for this game, although we've seen Alex Collins continue to get um, the early downs, uh, at least in the early going of this game. Um, Rashad Penny, um, he's on the uh, the list of, of, of waiver wires. We can talk about a little bit later. But... Um, Good to see Jerry. I think the best of the lot here of coming guys coming back is Jerry Judy. I think I, I think owners will be delighted to see to finally have him back. Yeah, I agree. Man, that that Broncos office scares me though. Bridgewater and Locke have not been impressive this year, and, and it looks like they're holding up the offense, even though they have some talent. They're recording the sudden and, and no font there, but I, you know I I worry about that um, the quarterback play there. And Judy is a hell of a talent, but I think he's going to be held back by it until they get an actual quarterback there. Mm, yeah, I, yeah, it's one of those things. Not all receivers are quarterback proof. But speaking of quarterback proof, you know, we were talking about Sam Darnold. Um, DJ Moore still got made, got a floor. He got, got 73 yards and, uh, uh, on six catches, I think. So, I mean, he got, I mean, he still got in half PPR. That's what, roughly about 10 points or so. I mean, so, I mean, seeing how bad Darnold did. <laughs> Getting benched yeah. all in the, in the fourth quarter there, so it's it's uh, for DJ Moore to come up on come up uh, par. It seems to be you know some some players can uh, overcome bad quarterbacks. Yeah, some can, and some you know you know like Robbie Anderson there. He's not he's not producing whatsoever. He's getting plenty of targets, but he's not producing whatsoever. Mm. And DJ Moore is just impressive with, with that lack of uh, passing talent there that he's still producing. Mm. Ah, let's talk about more bad quarterbacks. <laughs> the <laughs> Chicago Bears, uh, Justin Fields. Um, the kid's not feeling it, I don't think, uh, yet. Um, we talk about, uh, uh, Matt Nagy, who's another, uh, 
uh, another issue uh, of in the Bears organization with to do with D19. So uh, he might not be on the sidelines this weekend for the Bears. So um, might be better for him if he's out there. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> but nobody's doing well. I mean, uh, 55 yards between. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, 55 yards um, total for uh, Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson. So, and here I talk about, and and he threw like, I think, over 180 yards, I think, um, Justin Fields threw. And Sam Darnold threw 111. And, well, of course, they all went to DJ Moore, like he got 73 yards. But it just doesn't seem like, I think the only bright spot on the Bears is Khalil Herbert. Uh, 100 yards again. It's pretty good. I mean, a bit touchdown dependent, but, uh, you know, at least the Bears have something. Yeah, he's a promising rookie. I mean, he's, I mean, a six round pick. He's producing. I, I thought with Damian Williams returning that he would take a, have a, like a little bit of a back seat to him this week, but, uh, he, he stepped up and he was impressive. Ran for 97 yards and a touchdown. And, um, you know, you know I'm sure that was week six. So this would yeah. be at 100 yards. Yeah, first one to rush for over 100 yards against Tampa Bay this year. And, you know, the thing that scares me, you know, David Montgomery's coming back in a couple of weeks, so that limits his thing for the rest of the season. But right now, I mean, he's, he's like you said, he's a bright spot there. Justin Fields is uh, having a lot of growing pains. And uh, you know, the question is, do you think uh, Allen Robinson's going to get traded at the trend deadline? Jeez, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think if he makes enough noise, he will. I think if he's, you know, we don't know really what goes on in the background. I don't think yeah. he's happy. And and also there is the case too that um that Mooney seems to be the number one there right now. I mean yeah, I mean uh, like I mean on paper Alan Robinson's the the number one, but really in on the field it looks like Darnell Mooney's the number one receiver for the Bears for what it's worth. Yeah, that is, yeah, he's getting more targets, more definitely more deep throws. Yep. Than Robinson again. Robinson's not getting much, and they're not. Him and uh, Fields are have not developed the chemistry yet, so it's looking a lot worse than it probably is. But um, yeah, it feels there's like no time in the field. Man. He's not. His decision making is not very good either right now. No. The offensive line is not doing him any favors. So nah, he's on um, his back. He's get. He's. I mean, the the Tampa Bay. They just pinned their ears back and went after. It was like the Browns. What the Browns did to him. Right. So yeah, I just went right after him. Yeah. They didn't care about anything. Nope. Nothing to fear. Nope. But one more thing that I, before we leave this uh, story is uh, when David Montgomery does come back, for people who have uh, K- Khalil Herbert, is he still a hold? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, I think he niched the row. I think he wanted to get in the ball. Um, you know, even as uh, possibly a third down back and nothing else. I mean, Tariq Cohen's supposed to be coming back, but I haven't heard any, any good news about that yet. So I think Herbert may be taking that role over. Yeah. Know? So I think, you know, especially in Dynasty, I would definitely keep him. Um, you know, this season, I mean, they, you know, they say in a few weeks, November will come back, but I haven't heard any good news about him either. I mean, they say a few weeks. I've been here a few weeks for the last few weeks. So um, let's, let's see what progresses with that. But yeah. Or was somebody I definitely would be holding on to. Yeah, that's the thing is, is when uh, when a running back does well in their place, they don't have to rush uh, the player back. And I think that's one of the cases. A case in point with Madison, because I've had, because uh, it was a little bit, a couple of weeks ago, it was a bit of on and off with Dalvin Cook. So they were just um, sort of easing Dalvin Cook back in and then Madison. But again, I guess I think you should hold Herbert like you do Madison. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Detroit Lions, uh, Dan Campbell said last week he would shake things up. I kind of wasn't expecting it during the game. I was kind of expecting it like in, like in play calling or game planning or something like that. I wasn't expecting like this gadgetry, like all this, you know, onside kicks and, <laughs> and, uh, fake punts. <laughs> yeah, they try anything. Yeah, they're just trying just anything. Competitive. I didn't, they're competitive. Uh, yeah, they were. They were. There's no yeah. question about it. They, they made it exciting. But the thing is, uh, that's not kind of shaking things up really to me. That's kind of just, um, letting it all hang out sort of in, in, you know, on the field. It's, it's just, you know, kind of throwing the kitchen sink on the field, not, not really doing anything internally. Cause that's kind of when, when he said shake things up, I kind of thought, okay, he's going to try and do something with the team inside, but 
I don't know. Do you think maybe that still is the plan, uh, Dennis, or is it just, or is it just more of this gadgetry and trickiness? Yeah, yeah. I don't see. I don't see anyone on their bench is going to come up and do anything impressive. So it's more of a trick plays, and especially against the Rams. I mean, the Rams are one of the top teams in the league, so uh, they're just glad to be competitive with them in that game. Especially, yeah, you know, I don't have any faith in Goff, and I'm not sure the team does either. No. Uh, DeAndre Swift is having a great season. He's He's over, you know, exceeded expectations. So he's, uh, someone they can give the ball to even more now. And I think, you know, early in the season, they were just giving the ball at the end of the game instead of the beginning of the game, which didn't make any sense. But now he's getting the ball even more. Um, uh, yeah, they're so difficult to watch, but I don't think you can blame Campbell, Campbell right now. He's, no, in the team to at least try, you know. So, I mean, that's, they're not giving up on the, on the team every week. So that's good to see. No, yeah, that's right. And he's just not sticking with the same old, same old. I, 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 they haven't got a win, but dang, you know what? I like the coach. <laughs> Usually, you know, it's guys like Nagy, you just think that, oh, he's hopeless. He just, he just <laughs> likes to keep to stick to That's the same old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sticks to the same old boring stuff. And, uh, it, so it's just, at it. Anyways, uh, that's the, uh, that's the news and commentary. It's time for us to get into, uh, well, it's, what time is it? It could be. Where we're moving on now. We're moving on to the east side. To the east side. Yes, it's time for moving on up. And, uh, which, which, <laughs> well, it's a blast from the past. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to see who we're going to move on up this week. And for me, uh, the guy moving on up is uh, Damian Harris. I'll talk about him. Uh, starting to be pretty trustworthy. You know, like, generally speaking, Belichick has never made any, like, trustworthy running backs, especially. But I will say this, that Damian Harris, um, the last two weeks has posted 17 and 24 fantasy points in for, uh, for, pardon me, your fantasy team, two straight 100, 100 point, uh, 100 yard games. And, uh, so not looking too bad on the, uh, on that front, and he's the only running back that doesn't seem to be <laughs> getting into the doghouse. Either Ramondre Stevenson apparently has fallen off, and all this now DJ Taylor is, or JJ Taylor, I think, is now the guy who's uh, actually he could be moving on up in the in the sense of the backfield of the Patriots. But um, yeah, Damian William, Damian, pardon me, Damian Harris is uh, he's doing a pretty good job for your fantasy teams over the past couple of weeks, and uh, it looks like he's going to be steady on and i think belichick will uh he doesn't like bell cow running backs but i think he has really no choice yeah i agree i mean harris has been pretty impressive three consecutive games for touchdowns you know that game the patriots destroyed the jets i mean it's like everyone was contributing and that one you know jj terror ran two touchdowns bolden brandon bolden had six catches and chipped in with the passing pass receiving touchdown Mm -hmm. even matt jones you know had a 300 yard passing game so and I even think about Garrett Blunt, but Jarvis Green Ellis even scored too somehow. So in that game, so I mean everyone scored in that game. So it's um I mean it's good to see and Harris has been pretty impressive the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you're right. Bolden's the only guy that can vulture him really. And, yeah, uh, exactly. But yeah. uh apart from that, I think uh it really is he's the lead guy and he's doing a doing doing pretty good hundred yard games. So it's impressive. Uh who are you who's moving up for you? And uh it's probably be a little Captain obvious move, but I'm going to pick uh, Jamar Chase. Okay. I mean, he's been so explosive and impressive in his rookie season. The chemistry they had uh, between him and Burrow is fantastic. And I bet no one in Cincinnati has complained that the Bengals didn't draft an A. Sewell to tackle from Oregon. I mean, he chased has 754 receiving yards, which includes that 201 yards he had on Sunday. And the Bingo was impressive win over the Ravens. Mm-hmm. And he's an easy favorite for rookie of the year. And if he continues to dominate, I think he should get some under B points as well. Just incredible performance. Two hundred yards. That's yeah. that's just that's just just plain impressive. And and I look at uh, Higgins. Higgins got like what fifteen targets and he just I couldn't do anything with them. I mean, granted some of the targets were were the tough throws, I mean, but the, you know, the money shots were going to Jamar Chase, obviously. And uh, Chase is just uh, incredible. The chemistry, like you say, it's right there, that that LSU thing going on. Right. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Chase is definitely, he's he's in the elites now, I think. He's going to finish, he's going to easily, easily, easily finish the top ten. Of wide oh, yeah. receivers this year. Right, top five. Yeah. Because he's going. You know, he's, he's amazing. Okay. Danger, so, danger. 
Uh oh, panic time. <laughs> <laughs> who's your panic player? Who's who's who are you ready to press Yeah, I'm really on? worried about uh Antonio Gibson. I mean he's playing with the hairline shin fracture. Um and it's really diminished his fantasy production. He's not rushed for more than seven yards since week one. And I'm aware of his guts being out there, but uh He's no longer, you know, capable of being RB one for you, and it's hard to it's hard to get him in your lineup unless he falls into the end zone. Yeah, um, I'm going. I'm dropping him down to to RB twenty six this week, all the way down from sixteen to twenty six. I'm dropping him ten places this week. I just had enough. I can't. I can't. You just can't sustain that level. I mean, no. over the uh, just a second here, just over the he's uh, had finishes of like. I mean, he had a good. Up until week five, he was doing okay. But the last two weeks, uh, RB45 and RB32 finishes. Yeah, it's just not cutting it. And, uh, uh-huh. and it's, um, and he still doesn't have a 100 yard game. Uh, he's had 100 yard games with, the, like, if you, like, if, if you just count total scrimmage yards, but on the ground, uh, he's only got, uh, his best finish is 90 yards. And that was way back in week one. And he still finished only RB25 that, that we didn't score a touchdown. So, been a disappointment. yeah, he's, and, uh, a tough matchup coming up against Denver next week. And then they have their bye. So maybe things will turn around after the bye, but. Like you say, he's, he, he is, I completely agree. He's a bit of a worry. I was going to put him in my, my spot, but I, I'm putting Mike Davis of the, uh, Atlanta Falcons and he's, uh, I've got him at the rest of season at RB33. Uh, it, it's really, he's, he hasn't had a big week at all. He's his best fantasy point finish is 11 points back in week five against the Jets. Uh, he had one fantasy point. It's all, it, Cordero Patterson is the RB1 there. And uh, Mike Davis is just uh, back basically at this point. Yeah, he's been a huge disappointment. I, mean, I thought he was going to be the bell cow back there, but. Yeah, you know, like you said, Cordell Patterson is not the RB one there, and Davis should be dropped in all leagues. He's not going to do it for. Him. So now he's hurt now, so even add to that, and I think Patterson's just taking over the backfield there. Now that I was, I was not aware about his uh, about an injury here. Yeah, he left uh, late in the game. He left. Uh, I don't know if it was his foot. I think it was his foot or something. He left. Right. Yeah, I'll check it out. He didn't get any passing yards or anything, just four carries for 10 yards. <laughs> it's just, that's just, that's backup quarter. That's backup running back. That's, you know, like, like I say, relief back work. Um, he's going down. I have him at RB33, but he's going to be going down a little further. I haven't decided how far down I'm going to drop him on the rest of the season, but he is definitely heading down. But, like I said, uh, he limped off the field at the end of the game, so no updates as, as far as I know. Yeah, so. but as you say, borderline droppable, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, waiver wire stuff. Um, okay, now we get to talk about the waiver wire, uh, like the fantasy pros and, <clears throat> and uh, critique the fantasy pros, uh, choice feature, uh, a running back each, a wide receiver each, and a tight end each. Plus, we talk about it in general. But, uh, I will start and I'll start with, okay, the injury to Miles Sanders. Uh, apparently, the first report I've got is that, um, Miles Sanders is, it's, it's not a bad ankle sprain but it's uh it's gonna be week to week so um everybody's rushing out to get kenneth game well which is fine because he's gonna get a little more work but i i I think the guy to actually own really uh is boston scott boston scott's a good player and he also does some patch catching out of the backfield but so i don't i don't see that the kenneth gainwell really owns this uh owns the backfield in fact i think you'll see boston scott uh <clears throat> first on the field uh when philadelphia play not sure exactly who they play first who are they playing next week uh, uh, they are playing ah that's right they're playing detroit now it's a good matchup miles sanders won't be playing it um so i think it's a good one for i think everybody's picking up kenneth G- uh, kenneth gamewell because of uh, especially if you're in ppr or have ppr formats um kenneth gamewell is i think that's why he's getting the upper hand on the on the waiver wire um uh, grab choices so uh what's your choice who do you like uh who would you rather pick up yeah i'd rather have uh, kenneth gamewell i think he's going to be the, the player to own uh, especially in ppr leagues you know scott had that uh garbage tb at the end of the game um after the centers are forced to leave and it was mostly out in garbage time so i really have gamewell yeah gamewell scored his touchdown while 
Miles Sanders was still in the game. And to be honest, you know, Miles Sanders was kind of, you know, eh, a bit of a, kind of a boring draft pick. You know, I, I, yeah, disappointing. Yes, and it's, it's not been really all that great. Um, moving right along. Uh, see, uh, yeah, you've got a. I think we we touched on uh, Brandon Bolden a bit, but uh, you've got Brandon Bolden as uh, as your waiver wire selection. He's a RB five yeah, I mean, in uh, fantasy pros. Yeah, sorry. No, no problem. Sorry, Roger. Yeah, I mean, I think he's he's taking over that James White role as that pass catching pattern in New England. I mean, time for the most targets on the team Sunday, and I think he'd be you know at, at worst a nice bye week fill in for fantasy managers. So. Um, you know, even with uh, Harris, you know, having you know the bell cow um, action there, I think Bolton's still uh, someone you could add in PPR leagues. Yeah, uh, Ravens are off this week. Who's the other team that's off this week? Uh, Rams. I think. Ram. Uh, no, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe look. Huh? It's going stuff it up. Yeah, no, it's the Raiders. Raiders and Ravens. Oh, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so well, that's all right. Don't forget these things. Um, let's move on to uh, wide receiver. We kind of covered uh, Brandon Bolden quite a bit, so let's move on to uh, wide receivers. Uh, who you got for? Uh, who do you like out of the list there? Yeah, speaking of uh, Ravens, I love to get uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, you know, two games he's. He has seven grabs for 109 yards. Every single one of his catches has gone for a first down. And he's seen his increase in offensive snaps with 63% of snaps uh, on Sunday. Yeah, but we know the running game to speak of. Jackson now is another weapon in Bateman. I want a piece of that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, picking a, a guy who's on, um, like on, on a bye week, this sort of, it's sort of a quiet way to pick up guys who are on, like, I mean, if you can afford to, unless you don't get caught right. up, unless you need somebody like Gainwell or Boston Scott, I mean, you know, you can kind of, you know, sneak up the middle and, and get a guy like Rashad Bateman. Apparently, though, Rashad Bateman, uh, they, uh, uh Fitz, Pat Fitzmorris of Fantasy Pros uh, says uh, Bateman's NFL debut in Week Six was a mixed bag, and uh, which it kind of was. But he but he picked up in uh, Week Seven against Cincinnati, 80 yards on three catches, six targets, um, eight fantasy points. You know, uh, after the bye, it could be could turn up, and there's some good matchups ahead with Minnesota, Miami, and Chicago. So uh, so I like that pick, and uh, if you can afford to. Like, look at those guys who are on bye week uh, to uh, to scoop them up. Uh, yeah, my guy, especially even some. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Hey, some some fantasy managers also have to drop those kind of players, you know, to fill their rosters up. So if they start dropping like Bateman or you know the Ravens, um, you know, have them up while while they're on bye, stash them. Coming off a bye, and uh, we'll be back in action for week uh, eight, is LaVisca Chenault, uh, a guy that I really like. Uh, he was up. I tried to trade uh, I tried to trade Corey Davis. <laughs> I put up <laughs> Corey Davis for LaVisca Chenault, Chenault, and I got turned down. And, uh, huh. Kind of expectedly, but... Uh, yeah, kind of. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good. Worth a try, he, that was worth a try. Um, right, does hurt to try. Though. Joe put him on the block. Uh, you know, Joe, our fearless leader of the pack here. Uh, he put him on the uh, trading block, and I, I offered him Corey Davis. He turned it down almost like in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it was an impressive. What season. can I do? What can I do? How do I get rid of Corey Davis? I don't want to just drop him. Can't get yeah. anything. I can't get anything for Corey Davis. No, uh, not surprising. Yeah, I'm not even. I, mean, I was beginning of the year. I was not really high, um, looking forward to see Chenault in that offense. But yeah, you know, now I'm, I'm so disappointed in the amount of I would, uh, you know, try to continue that love or not. I mean, even with now the Shark out for the season, uh, I think you know Marvin Jones is the guy to have there. Chenault's kind of looking on the outside looking in right now. Well, he's he's not really doing a whole. He's not really doing a whole lot. I mean, like before the bye week, he was. Uh, WR 59 and WR 39. I don't know, but I don't know. I just like, I think he's a good football player and I like good players. So I, I just think he's a good football player. And when you, when you think a guy's a good football player and he's not like, okay, uh, six fantasy points and eight fantasy points in, in consecutive weeks doesn't sound really great. But when, when a player is sort of like passing the eye test for you, Go ahead and get him. 
if 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 a guy is if guy if a guy catches your eye, folks, uh, don't don't hesitate to get him because he he's probably if you're a football smart person, uh, a guy like Lefistka Chenault is a good pickup. And the fantasy pros, and I completely agree with him being WR two on the wide receiver list. Think of fantasy pros, Dennis. Who do you got? Oh yeah, already did it. I guess we're going on yeah. the tight ends. Oh, that's my turn. Uh, Mowally Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Wally Cox is the tight end. Uh, scored a touchdown as I made a suggestion in my blurb view uh, to uh, pick him up because Darren Waller was out and it turned out to be a treat because Wally Cox uh, caught the first touchdown uh, of the game and it was just a horrible weather condition. Oh, and, that was bad. And uh, Wally Cox came up, you know, came up trumps. I really think he's a good player and I, but, and, uh, I don't know what you think, Dennis, but I think the Colts are getting better slowly but surely. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, Wentz is looks like he's getting back to his old. We used to play with the Eagles and Frank Reich is, you know, making the play calls there. Um, yeah, and then that massive running attack there with Jonathan Taylor. I mean, he's a freaking beast. Yeah, you know, and and Alec Cox. I mean, he's he's great as a red zone favorite. You know, for Wentz and I mean, he's touch on dependent in that offense, but still, I mean, that's what he does. So he really one out of ten and score touchdowns. So yep, uh, man, he's a definitely good pickup. I mean, that's almost similar to the player that I'm gonna that I'm gonna mention uh, shortly. Yeah, uh-huh. touchdown the dependent in the offense that scores. Uh, that's what you want. You know, yeah, because uh, my guy is uh, CJ who's on from the Bengals. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he, he catches the ball. He scored, um, you know, he scored touchdowns recently, and he's now, I think, now the third option over a Tyler Boyd in that offense, which is kind of scary and after Chase and Higgins. You're looking at Uzama for big plays, and he's made it the last couple of weeks. Yep. I, yeah, you're right. A similar type of guy to Mawali Cox. Uh, you're kind of expecting a touchdown, but they're going to get those. Uh, Uzama is actually, it was a long touchdown run, too, for Uzama, too. He's got, he's got some wheels, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he has two big plays he had. I mean, he you know, got three targets, but he had two touchdowns and there were big plays in that game and turned the tide for them. So it's good to see. I would I would take him uh, over the TE one. The the fantasy pros rankers uh, waiver rankers have Robert Tunyon at first. Uh, yeah, well, I want no part of him. <laughs> no, I don't really want a part of him. But maybe for this game, if depending on, I mean, he could be an extra option because of the status of Devontae Adams. Depending, you yeah. Know. Maybe, but it was just the one week thing, maybe. But I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's stream, streamable. Like, I think that's probably yeah. what these, these rankers think of is, uh, in streamable sense. Like, uh, and we usually talk about some quarterbacks. Uh, the, the quarterback list is, eh, it's kind of like not good. I think the best guy here, I think Mac Jones should be number one. He had his first 300 yard game, uh, this weekend against the Jets. Um, yeah, it's getting better and better. Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's at QB4. So if you're streaming QBs and, uh, and, uh, maybe if you've, if you've got Derek Carr and you've been using Derek Carr as your QB1 this week or L- Lamar Jackson being out, you can, and, and all the good quarterbacks are taking, you can take Mac Jones. You can stick Mac Jones in there, I think. Yeah, to, to I agree. Get, to get Actually, I may, I'm even thinking of, you know, grabbing Daniel Jones. You know, and he has a matchup against the Chiefs this week and the Chiefs defense is horrendous. I mean, they can't stop anyone. Anyway. So, oh boy, that's I mean, Jones story. has not been impressive. I mean, he has up and down games. Hopefully, maybe we'll get some of his receivers back this week. But, uh, yeah, I, I take the chances with Daniel Jones, too. So, you know, one of those quarterbacks, if you're looking uh, for someone uh, to get you by a week, I think any of the two Jones uh, quarterbacks would be good, good to go with. Yeah, Chiefs are having a problem winning games. They're yeah, behind they're everybody. They're even behind Denver. Yeah. <laughs> go figure. Uh, but if we're picking up people, we got to drop people, Dennis, sadly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we got to drop somebody. Who are you dropping? Uh, Robbie Anderson. Ooh. I, yeah, uh, he's, he's getting a lot of targets, but he's not producing. And now with Sam Darnold, uh, you know, his former teammate, the Jets now struggling as well and being benched and possibly being replaced by PJ Walker this week. And you know, who knows what's going to happen the rest of the season. Maybe Watson gives there. Um, yeah, I, I'm done with Robbie Anderson. Uh, yeah, I don't have any problem with that. And uh, I think we probably mentioned this guy, but uh, yeah, I still think he's got to be dropped. I don't think I can't see him coming up, Dennis. It's Brandon Ayuk. He's just not. <laughs> he's not getting any better. It's people are hanging no. on to him, and I don't know why. It's time. It's time. I mean, we've got the last three games. We had 
uh, WR97, WR77, <laughs> WR75. One target against the Colts. One target. All the rest of Everything's going to Debo Samuel. And when Kittle comes back, well, Kittle isn't coming back, is he? So, it's just, yeah. it's just, the targets just aren't there. I mean, you know, two, six, three, four, one, I'm looking here. Like, there's uh, no, no targets in the first game. Sorry, that was my water yeah, bottle. Was- <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, he looks uh he looks horrendous. I mean did you see the play yet in that kickoff? He was kicking the ball with like a football foul. He's, yes. Uh, yeah. That was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Oh my god. I was like, what is he doing? I think well, he's yeah. you know, they're booing him at the stadium now. Yes. Um, you know, the fans are booing him and he's just now it's in his head and yeah, he's just not someone you want to rock really. So I think this is probably the second time that we mentioned him. You already mentioned him before, but all right, come on, people. Let's get rid of this guy. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, finally, uh, spec ads. I like spec ads. And, uh, for me, uh, all the, the, with all the Giants injuries and a little bright spot, this, this guy used to play with the 49ers and, uh, and he was kind of like Brandon Ayuk in a way. Cause he would never, he couldn't produce anything on the, on the 49ers, but he goes to the Giants and, uh, he did something. Dante Pettis. And, uh, you know, considering all the injuries they got, he, um, he got a touchdown and he, you know, I don't think you rush out and get him, but I don't know. You, you, you don't do badly if you got room, if you're thinking, well, I got a spot. What can, who can I put on here? Like just. You know, I think you could put Dante Pettis in there. Why not? If you've got, you know, if you've got nothing else to do. What do you think of Dante Pettis? Yeah. Yeah, he's not a kind of a surprising, you know, player to put up there, but he's produced the last two games with 10 catches. So, and with that wide receiver room at the Giants uh, not playing, um, you know, he's been, he's been stepping up in that, in that role. So it's good to see him, you know, come back after being kind of, uh, you know, thrown out of San Francisco, more or less. But he's been producing. I mean, and I wonder what's going to happen when the receivers do get back in New York. But as a spec ad, as like a third receiver, maybe in a PPR, not, not a bad selection. No, not bad. I mean, but you're going to get Tony and Galladay back pretty soon, I guess. I think, maybe. Yeah, who knows? Uh, yeah, who knows uh, over there? Uh, Shepard uh, is out again, I think. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was almost close to coming back last week, but then they held him out the last second, so... And, Maybe we'll uh, see him again. But I would prefer Pettis over Ross easily. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, he's kind of uh, he's a spec ad, uh, like very much on the on the on the fringe of the radar. Who you got? Not exactly fringe yeah, we, of the radar guy, but, uh, but yeah, he kind I mean, of. He's, uh, he's scored the last couple, of, you know, back to back games. Alan Lazard is not widely owned, and with Devontae Adams uh, out on Thursday, probably in a high scoring matchup. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go with Alan Lazard there. I mean him. The sneaky ad along with Randall Cobb, I think those two can produce for you on Thursday night. Yeah, just uh, uh, like a streaming option. Yeah, Alan Lazard, uh, definitely, especially with what with the news coming out. Just taking a look at a few of the other names here that are on the list here. That's just, just going to pick out a couple here. Uh, it's Jamal Agnew. He's WR16 <coughs> for the... Uh, a place for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He got the, he got, he actually got his fame from that long touchdown from a, from a missed, uh, kick that was going to be like the, uh, guy going for the, the Arizona guy going for a, uh, what was it? A, a 68 yard field goal and he ran yeah. it back for a touchdown. That was Agnew. And as a reward, he's been getting some, he's getting some looks in the, uh, on, on offense. So uh, it's, that's kind of interesting that he would be on this list. Right. Um, yeah. I don't see, I don't see no reason to grab him. I mean, there's some kind of interesting players. Uh, Ben Jefferson of the Rams. He's, he's been producing the last couple of weeks and KJ Osborne had that. Nice touchdown to the game uh, for his bye week. Van Jefferson's a good, a good guy to have on your bench, I think. Yeah, he, I like him. He's and Brian uh, Edwards. He's hit or miss. So. He's hit or miss. Yeah, similar hit kind of guy. I guess you can say that about <laughs> you can say that about Slayton, I suppose, too. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. I and mean, I can't believe they had uh, you know Peyton Barber back on here again. I mean, with Jacobs hurt, 
Possibly they put Peyton Barber as a running back eight to pick up. I, I just hate to keep saying I don't want to take him, but he did produce when he was on the field those couple of times. So yeah, I still don't want him. <laughs> yeah, now that Kenyon Drake is sort of uh, I don't know they're starting to use him again. Uh, Ken, uh, Kenyon yeah, Drake is he's 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 becoming okay, but uh, <laughs> I just have a hard time. It's so it's so hard to trust. But the interesting guy, but a guy that you should have, and, and because he could get traded to a good situation. Is Marlon Mack. You keep talking about him getting on the trade uh, block. In fact, the Saints right. who are playing today might pick him. I thought would be a bad spot. Uh, yeah, a, that's good, a bad spot. For a good spot might be the Chiefs because they're really needing something. Yeah, to, uh, that's true. But, yeah, I think he'll get traded. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, trade deadline is uh, different in the NFL, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Mack and maybe Val Robinson gets traded. Uh, I just didn't see where he goes. Yeah. So that about wraps it up for the show. Uh, Dennis, it's great to have you back, man. And we'll look forward to no- another week next week to, to going through our uh, waiver wares and whatnot. Uh, and how are you doing, your leagues? How did you do during this long, bu- this bad buy week? Uh, I was, yeah, it was rough. Yeah, a couple of my leagues were, I got destroyed in because I had no one left. And actually, yeah, last night's game with uh, the touchdown of Michael Pittman actually won me a game. Yeah. That's the only game I won all week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> which is sad but um that yeah, was a rough week how are the how are the fantasy guys treating you i got destroyed <laughs> i destroyed it's terrible it was terrible, rough. terrible terrible rough 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 went up against yeah, rough. uh yeah it was uh yeah it was aj brown that really uh, put the knife in <laughs> yeah, my the... my opponent had aj brown and uh, just the knife he just had it you had a blow out good at that game. Okay. Really killed it. So, anyways, uh, moving forward, we always, you know, fantasy has such a short memory. So, anyways, thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. Be sure to check out Dennis on Wednesday. He has stock up and stock down. So, some of the stuff we're talking about will probably be included in this article. And for me, I do the rest of the season that comes out on Thursday and, of course, on Friday night. Don't forget to check out Blur View every game. It in blurb formats, so it's really quick, so you'll be able to, you know, don't waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> Get uh, quick, quick, quick um, rundowns of the uh, games coming up the weekend when all sorts of different stuff. So, so be sure to check out our articles there and uh, see us n- or well, listen to us next week on the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody, and that's the show. 